In science today, we have a big problem. We are collecting more data than we know what to do with. The solution most engineers come up with is simply to make computers bigger or faster. But some researchers are looking to some more unconventional approaches. What if we harnessed the efficiency and power of biological systems that have evolved to deal with this kind of complexity? Here is the slime mold. It can be programmed to find the shortest path in a maze <laughs> and killing off parts of itself that don't lead to a food source. As the maze gets more complex, the slime mold can solve it with the same efficiency. By manipulating the maze and the location of food sources, this slime mold is capable of being programmed to find solutions to very difficult computational problems. So what if we used a more intelligent organism? I turn your attention to Glastonbury Festival. <laughs> Here we can see roughly 100,000 attendees distribu distributed across a very complex maze, much like the slime mold. <laughs> Each particle, or attendee, must traverse the maze alone or in groups to locate resources to fit their needs. Uh, similarly to the slime mold, through some natural algorithm, many of these particles die off during the pursuit. <laughs> This is serious. <laughs> Due to their relative intelligence, attendees have a diverse set of needs, including food, performances, space, and in a return to a sense of childlike freedom, balloons. Let me show you a couple of ways in which these needs can be manipulated to solve difficult computational problems in science. <laughs> Protein folding is a very difficult problem. From a sequence of amino acids, we need to infer how to minimize the frustration of a sequence to a folded protein. For example, minimizing the exposure of hydrophobic amino acids to water by encasing them. Manipulating any part of the chain alters the resulting shape so the potential combinations are enormous. This means we are only capable of modeling very small proteins. So is there a, natural, uh, is there a way of using the natural algorithms of Glastonbury Festival uh, to solve this problem? I propose that finding somewhere to place a series of tents on muddy ground is computationally equivalent to protein folding, since it is an inherently frustrating experience. <laughs> For example, many attendees also display hydrophobic tendencies. But how do you stop water flowing into your tent during the British summertime? Especially if we recruit people to dig up the necessary water channels. So if we can control the sources of frustration, such as groups of children or barbecue locations or whatever, we can make attendees distribute their tents to model proteins of our choosing. And since this is a natural algorithm, the size of the protein should no longer matter. A second application would be towards the simulation of vast systems of stochastic nonlinear differential equations used in modeling biophysical, meteorolog meteorological, or socioeconomic phenomena that can be represented as a stochastic network of oscillators. Here we see a performance by the Grindy group Kasabian. As you can see, attendees behave as a stochastic network of oscillators. We can, manip we can manipulate performances through the lineup, set list, and visual effects displayed to manipulate properties of the system and simulate the conditions we want. For example, the gentleman holding a, a bottle of what I guess is cider is a clear example of a chaotic oscillator phase, phase coupled to his neighbors. In this state, he could be used to calculate solutions to a turbulent diffusion problem. Notice how the system becomes less chaotic as the song changes. A clear phenomenon, uh, a clear example of the phenomenon I believe is known as, uh, as waiting for the beat to kick in. And as I skip forward, observe how easily this state can be, uh, this can be reinstated. It's a state of chaos. Uh, now I won't deny that there will be major costs in dealing with musical artists. A recent study uh, shows that the cost of producing Glastonbury headlining worthy material can run into the millions. This is because, unlike scientists, musicians are renowned for being petulant, unreliable, <laughs> and... Dem Shh. I'm trying.
trying to solve our own proficiency here. We're and they demand high fees when commissioning new work. <laughs> However, this is a necessary cost to ensure tight control over the attendees during computational tasks. It will be hard to swallow for some members of the audience, but for the good of science, a large portion of research funding will have to be transferred to the arts. <laughs> Finally, a unique property of the Glastonbury attendance is that it is field programmable. The state of an attendee can be acutely altered for them to change their behavior as part of a computation, or for them to be involved in multiple computations in parallel. In fact, attendees are even likely to seek out substances <laughs> that make this happen. <laughs> I propose that we put in place our own distribution network amongst Glastonbury attendees to acutely control the computational state a hallucinogen could transform an attendee from being part of a locally coupled network to individual interpretation of, of light shows. Or an amphetamine could be used to dial up the stochasticity of an individual within a network. <laughs> sub, 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 such substances offer endless possibilities. Now, an astute observer might say that this proposal is, is less than legal. <laughs> However, I counter that if uh, an Australian chap can change the law in his favor, and so can I. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.